What is up, boys? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a hot little minute since we last recorded, but here we are with a long-awaited video, our chaining masterclass video. Guys, my voice sounds a little weird. I am just recovering from an absolutely ridiculous uh, sickness, but we're back, we're chilling, and we are out here ready to start. So guys, I always get asked, what marches I go for when I chain? Um, what do I look for when I chain? Um, how many barbs should you chain? You know, how am I using so many marches? You know, I get asked all these questions. Um, when I chain and this is going to be a full breakdown of what I look for and how I play. So the first thing I'm going to go to is what I look for when I go for a barb chain. So over here, like generally you see like four barbs here. This is perfect. This is something I'd immediately go for. And it's not something you need like a super advanced chain for. So if I wanted to use like Martel Theo to get this, I use Moctezuma Theo, but I don't suggest most people get mocked. I'd throw Mock Theo over here. So he would collect those four for one barb and that's pretty good. Um, and then I'd look around a little more. Uh, generally, I'm looking for groups of about three barbs. This might be good for like Martel or Chow Chow Cyrus, right? Um, those kind of marches might do better because there's a bigger circular AoE. The new commander, Heracleus, is also really, really good for chaining. Um, I believe he's got the same AoE as YSG and Cyrus, so if you've got him, you can use him as well. Theodora's kind of like the smallest circular AoE, so if you see the barbs are really close, then you can use Theo. If you see them a little further, then you can use someone else, right? So like this is probably Theoable. Where like this, this is kind of a bigger split. You might be looking for like Cyrus or Heracleus. So generally, if you can find patches of like three to four barbs, that's more than enough. Every once in a while, you'll find like patches where you're like, okay, maybe I can do this and then drag it up here and then go over here and you can get like 20 barbs. And that's all great. The thing is, is like, you'll never be able to spend your AP generally if you only high roll the marches. At the end of the day, there are two types of efficiency in this game. One is your resource efficiency. That's going to be action points, right? That's the resource you're using. And the other is going to be time efficiency. So for example, I play maybe three hours a day, something like that. Um, I generally don't like to play more than I stream. So if you see me on stream, that's generally um, all, if not almost all of what I'm going to be playing. With that being the case, I want to make sure that those three hours are my most efficient three hours I can possibly make. So if I see, let's say across the map, so like over here, there's like maybe like five barbs. Maybe I could see like, like 10 or I could see like some kind of bigger chain right I, I could go to like the most like abandoned like destitute part of the map and see if I can get like an 8 or 10 or 20 chain the thing is is uh when you consider how long it would take my Richard YSG to walk there I could actually just kill like a few extra um like little groups of like three to five barbs and I could get um I could get these barb kills a lot faster and at the end of the day like you will never be able to chain out enough AP to the point where you run out of AP right? At a certain point, you'll always be five marching. So as long as you're getting more than one barb, you'll always be doing more efficient than the status quo. So you have to remember, it's not, oh no, I'm using AP. It's, I'm getting rid of this AP compared to five marching, right? Because that's what you're always comparing it to, or I'm comparing it to forts maybe, right? So if like killing three barbs in a chain is much better than forts, you just want to be killing at least three. You can kill more if you want to, but at the end of the day, like the time efficiency is what's really important, right? I don't want to play this game for eight hours a day, and I assume most people don't want to play this game for eight hours a day. So just try to be as efficient as humanly possible when with the hours you do play, right? Because I mean, if you're chaining, like if my chaining, I chain with um, three marches, soon to be four marches, um, and I'm chaining as efficiently as humanly possible, that means that my chaining is going to be like, what is eight or nine hours for one person might be like three hours for me. So I don't have to play eight or nine hours. I can just make sure that I'm hitting small groups of barbs. I'm hitting them efficiently. So another thing is going to be pairings. One of the reasons why I can kill barbs so quickly is because of the specific pairings that I use. So right now, the pairings that I use are going to be Moctezuma Theodora. I use him with infantry because I like the infantry barbing gear better and Chow Chow Cyrus. Most of you guys are not going to have Moctezuma where I have him. I have Moctezuma at 5541, which makes him an absolute wrecking ball when it comes to barbs most people aren't going to have that so you guys can use um, probably martel and then with the new commander coming out heracleus right so i'll use martel with heracleus because i have mock but if you don't have mock you can probably get away with using maybe Wu Zetian or Zenobia or really any kind of any kind of peacekeeper. If you find yourself using like Ethelflaed, um, it's probably still okay. Generally, you want something tanky, but the majority of the thing that you need is AoE. If you kill three marches really fast and you have to pull them back repeatedly, that's okay. The whole point is that you kill the marches very fast because time is more important than action points here because you'll have enough action points to just keep going. I came into this KBK, I think with 30,000 action points. And right now, if I look at it, I have... I don't know, like 27,000, right? Like it's it's pretty difficult to get to actually zero AP. So even if you're chaining with four marches, like it's kind of okay. Now I don't generally suggest to chain with four marches. The reason why it's so easy for me is because I'm on PC. So if I like double tap, I can go from march to march to march to march, right? And this has to do with the hotkeys that I select. So I mean, at the end of the day, you know, 
you select the round, you look for three barbs. I drag it over here. I don't even have to look at it, right? I know how that's gonna work, right? And then this, you know, this guy can hit these three and then, you know, we'll have Cyrus like hit these four and that's how it's gonna work, right? And yeah, I just fly around the map with my hotkeys, make sure that everything's chaining and then boom, that's a three chain in my sleep. Another thing that I like to do is I like to use 25% expansions um, if I'm just chaining in Season of Conquest, like I just got on the map, um, or sometimes I'll even use the 50% expansion if I know we don't have fighting soon or at the end of fighting. So like if you do like a ruin or an altars, um, after you finish that fight, you're still gonna have some time with your expansion. You take that time and you shoot out a Richard YSG, or while you're fighting, you just fire out the Richard YSG, um, and then, you know, you just kind of bench Boudicca for like the last like 30 minutes of your expansion. Another thing that is really, really important with your pairings is going to be your gear. Um, a lot of people ask me what my gear is, um, and I don't have like anything too specific. Um, I just make sure to get everything with bar damage. So over here, like this is generally what I like for gear. Um, this is non-negotiable. You will need a Savage Totem. It's not that hard to get. I'm not saying uh, craft bones in your, in your blacksmith because 70 blue bones is just not that hard to get. Just over time, you'll pick them up. You'll build a Savage Totem and then you'll find it up and you'll use it on each one of your barbing marches. Um, generally, I run Kyrax Humility just because I think 10.5% uh, infantry health is slightly better than Ranger's Trousers, but Ranger's Trousers is fine as well. The reason why I really like infantry generally and I have infantry for Mocked and I like infantry on uh, Charles is because the infantry gear for chaining is just so good. So we look over here, we have the Cess Brutality, we have the Frost Treads and we have the Quinn Soul, and these all give like very high damage to barbs. Generally, I, if you're chaining, I would focus on your infantry barb chaining marches first, and I'd make sure you have this. Now, this is going to cut into your overall gear. I have like three sets of barb marching gear, and it cuts into my main gear, um, like the main marches that I can run. But at the end of the day, like these have all paid themselves off for me, right? The efficiency that they give me has very easily like paid me back in materials, gems, and speeds what I had originally spent on it. Um, if you're not gonna chain that much, you might just wanna go green gear and call it a day. For me, it's important that I run this, right? Having my 40% uh, barb damage is really important, but I understand why you wouldn't want to. So like over here, I've got the Ranger's Trousers and it's 40.1%. And then over here, um, I generally have the, uh, the Gladiator on him, but I was fighting recently. So Gladiator is gonna give me an extra 6.5%. Uh, and so he'd, he'd normally be around like 32% damage to barbs. And I don't like the cab gear as much, but it's cheap, so I mean, it's fine. Another thing that's really, really important is gonna be your armaments. Um, for some reason, a lot of people are like throwing away their barb damage armaments. Like if you find an armament that gives you like 6.8 damage to barbs, that's crazy. If you find the payback inscription on one of your armaments, you always, always, always keep it. That inscription is single-handedly, like it's going to be better than any armament that you pick up uh, that gives barb damage. A lot of people will say like, why don't you get like the barb damage resistance and why do you only get the barb damage? Because the thing is, is like, I don't care if I have to pay a little bit of extra hospital bill. I chain with T5s because I don't care about the resources. I have five farms, right? I care about the speeds. I care about the gems. I care about the materials, right? You're trying to do this shit fast and you're trying to go back as little as possible. Because at the end of the day, your time is the resource, right? The more time you use, the worse off you'll be. So you're trying to go fast, 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 fast. Everything is a race, right? And the more efficient you can be, that means the more barbs you can kill. So over here, I have a little section on mechanics. Uh, this is just gonna be something really quick. Um, over here, this is gonna be like Cha Cha Cyrus. Um, when you're killing barbs, so this guy's a little differently because his uh, AOE is on his third ability. So it popped right there and it didn't pop on this guy. So generally, um, Cha Cha Cyrus will do an absolute shitload of damage and will just start wrecking barbs. Um, so if he gets the barbs a little too low, I do something I call wiggling, right? So I wiggle back and forth, and right now I'm waiting for Cyrus's third ability to proc, right? I don't want to use um, Cha Cha's uh, first ability because it might end up killing it and then I wouldn't get the chain, right? So now this is dead. That's cool. That's a two chain. I could go further, but you know, I, I don't really care right now. So over here, I'm gonna show another mechanic. Um, if you fight in the open field, you're gonna recognize this as something you just do to other people. Um, these kind of mechanics generally transfer over um, if you know what you're doing, because chaining uh, people in the field when you fight is very similar to chaining barbs uh, in terms of like conservation of rage and not dropping aggro and stuff like that. So over here, I'm attacking this one barb. I'm going to wait until Richard's ability has gone off and then I'm gonna move, right? So right now it says I have zero rage. I've used my primary ability, but now my secondary ability is gonna go off. So let's pretend I started attacking this guy over here. I could move with it, right? I still haven't fired my ability. And I walk into range of this barb and then I let loose. And this is how I consistently make sure that barbs are chaining each other. Because if you see a barb like doing like kind of like a wiggle and it's like struggling to keep up with you, that barb is probably going to reset. 
So you want to make sure that you have your full rage because if you only get like one or two hits as it's resetting, you want to make sure that you get that ability off. Or you want to make sure you get the ability. So here's another thing you can do. So let's charge the ability. So we get the ability. We walk over the 46, right? We want to aggro it, but we don't want to let this part move around too much because we want to make sure that it doesn't reset, right? So boom, it goes off and then we move back, right? Now there's no wiggling. There's no way for it to reset, but we've loaded the rage. We've chained the next barb. The next barb comes to us, right? And so we make sure we get this kill. Then we're walking up, we're chaining it. I want to make sure that I load in my rage before I move because you, you know you just don't want to be dropping barbs for free. We're moving, we're seeing if this is wiggling or not. Uh, I'm not seeing any kind of wiggle here. It looks like it really wants to come over here. And boom, easy. And then you can move back consistently um, if you want to. If you're not if you're not too like uh, attuned to like if the barb is wiggling, if it's going to reset. Um, every single time that you chain a barb like this, you can just move a little bit back, right? And they'll just stop resetting. Um, for me, like I've just I've chained an ungodly amount of barbs, so I just know what it looks like, um, and I know why it looks in the way it does, right? But if you get used to seeing the wiggles, um, if you get used to like rage loading your abilities, because um, like look over here, like this is this is kind of a tight one, but I mean. This has been, I think, like a six chain, like very casually. Um, like I thought this was maybe gonna be a three. Oh, almost, right? And sometimes you still mess up, but it's okay, right? At the end of the day, like we just got like four barbs and this is way, way more than enough. You know, if you're looking at these rewards, you know, you're not unhappy with what you just got. And the last thing here is going to be March management. So Richard YSG is going to be the main March that you wanna focus on. Um, the March that you're microwing as hard as I microed always wants to be Richard YSG. Um, Chow Chow Cyrus might need uh, more microwing, or maybe this might be like um, Chow Chow Theodora for you guys, and this might be like uh, Martel Cyrus or something like that. Anything with Cyrus is going to need more microwing because, you know, if your March kills the barb too fast, then um, you're not going to be able to wiggle because 10% chance um, should theoretically be like going off like once an ability rotation. But I mean, in theory and in practice are two completely different things. And because you can't rage load the ability, um, they're a lot more proning, uh, prone to like resetting and stuff and you have to wiggle it. Um, so that's like a pretty micro intensive march, but the march that you really want to make sure is like picking up steam and killing as much as possible is going to be Richard YSG because that's going to go home the least. Every single time you go home, that is time wasted and we don't want to waste time. So at the end of the day, the important things to remember here are going to be make sure that you make a basic gear set for your barbs. Um, this is going to be an advanced gear set. This is going to be something like a basic gear set. So just make at least a basic gear set for your barbs. Um, take your extra armaments that you do not care about and toss them uh, straight on it. Looks like this is like 18.6% damage to barbs from arm armaments. It doesn't matter if it's echelon, it doesn't matter if it's wedge, it doesn't matter what it is. As long as it has bar damage, slap it on there. And that goes for gear and that goes for armaments, right? For commanders, we're looking for, you know, Richard YSG. We're looking for like Martel's uh, Cyrus or like Martel Theodora. We're looking for Chow Chow Cyrus, Chow Chow Theodora, and then potentially like Wu Zetian or Zenobia um, with Heracleus, the new champ, right? And we're looking for that and then we gear them all with like basic barb damage gear. There's nothing too specific about it. And then you're just running them on the open field. You don't have to run four marches. You don't have to run three marches. You have to run whatever you can effectively manage. At the end of the day, if you can only manage Richard YSG, then just use Richard YSG. You don't want to be wasting AP and you surely, surely, surely don't want to be wasting your time. So just focus on doing what you can um, and practicing because eventually when you start using one march, especially if you're on PC um, and you know, you're, you're flipping around, you're, you're doing, you're going to your, your bar, your barb chaining march, and then you're going back to your gatherers and you're trying to make sure that everything's going and you're balancing these plates. Um, then you'll be like, okay, well maybe I can use two, right? And you'll get used to using two and then you'll get used to using three. You don't just have to hop in. You don't immediately have to be the most efficient. You just have to be on that path. With that being said, guys, that's probably going to be it for the video today. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a follow, a like, consider commenting if you learned anything new, or if you have any tips and tricks for training, I'm always up to learn something new. And if you guys are interested in coaching, I do private one-on-one -on -one coaching for $35 a session. Um, it's right, right there. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, make sure you go to the discord in the description below and DM me saying I'm interested in coaching. Um, if you guys want notifications when I go live or you want to contact me while I'm not live, the single best place to find me is that discord in the description below. So make sure to head over there. If you guys want to help out the channel financially, we do have a merch store with uh, pretty cool like phone cases and hoodies and all that good stuff. And we also have a tip link in the description below. You know, if you guys want more videos and you know, you guys want me to keep chugging along, um, donations always, always help. Thank you so much guys. I really appreciate y'all watching and have yourselves a great day.